Hey Code Crew, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to show you eight Swift tips that you can use today to improve your Swift programming skills. And if you watch to the end, I'll throw in a bonus tip for a total of nine. And this last one is one that I use and love often in my own coding. Now, some of these tips are going to help you be more efficient. Some of them are going to help you organize your code and yet others will just help you write less Swift code. But no matter what, all of them are things that you can apply today, no matter what level of Swift coder you are. So if that sounds good, please give this video a thumbs up because every single one helps this video get more exposure. So thank you and I appreciate it. All right, without further ado, let's start with number nine. Number nine. Optional binding where the name of the constant is the same as the name of the optional. In this statement, my car is an optional and we're checking my car for value before printing out the actual name. Instead of doing this, did you know that you can instead write it like this? So here, the constant name is the same as the optional name. And that way, inside the scope of the if statement, you can simply refer to my car for the actual value. Less variable names floating around means less confusion and code that is easier to understand. Number eight, the nil coalescing operator. And here's that my car optional again. In this piece of code, we have a variable called car name. And depending on whether the my car optional has value or not, we want to either assign the actual value or a string called na into car name. You can use the nil coalescing operator to shrink this down to something like this. That double question mark is the nil coalescing operator. And if the optional is nil, then it'll take the value on the right hand side of it instead of the actual value in the optional. Number seven, shorthand if statements. Similar to how the nil coalescing operator helps you write less code, you can shrink down if statements oftentimes too. Instead of writing something like this, where we check if grades is over 50 and then assign the string into message, you can write something like this on a single line. And this means exactly the same thing. The format is condition followed by a single question mark, followed by the statements you want, depending on whether the condition is true or false. The true statement comes first and then a single colon separates them. Number six, centralizing your hard-coded strings in a constants file. Okay, this one is really easy. Here's how you do it. Create a new Swift file. Inside, declare a struct and add your hard-coded strings as static properties. If you have a lot, you can even nest structs for another layer of organization. Now, whenever you need to refer to the hard-coded string, simply reference your static properties of your constants file. You know, I gotta say, coding is really important for app development, but that's only one side of it. You also have to consider how the app looks and feels, and overall, it needs to have a great user experience. Back when I was doing software consulting, we had teams of designers and user experience folk just focused on that. And since I became a solo developer, I've had to pick up some of these UX tips myself. One of the best classes I took on this was on Skillshare, Intro to UX, Fundamentals of Usability by Marike McCloskey. Now, her being the director of research of user testing, there were so many interesting insights on how people actually use digital products. I learned best practices for designing apps for usability and also how to evaluate the usability of an app. I highly recommend it. As it happens, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes ranging from coding, entrepreneurship, animation, design, music, and so much more. In addition to the usability class that I mentioned before, another class I'm taking that I think will improve my apps a lot is animating with ease in After Effects with Jake Bartlett because I'll be able to use these animations inside my apps. The thing I like about Skillshare is that it's really affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. There are no ads and they're constantly adding new premium classes. Right now, Skillshare has a special offer for our code crew here. The first 1,000 people to click on the link below in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership. You can use it to explore all of the classes that they have to offer, so definitely check it out and take advantage of it. All right, with that said, let's go on with our countdown. Number five, pragma mark. Now, this tip has to do with organizing your code. If you take a look at this example, it's hard to tell what these methods do, especially with such bad method names. However, using pragma marks, we can at least separate them into sections. Here's how you do it. You use double forward slash like a comment, and then you write mark in all capital letters, 
followed by a colon and then space dash and space and then this is whatever you want to name that section. Now you can leave out the dash but the dash adds a separator line. Another benefit to using pragma marks is that in the jump bar when you pull down to see an outline of the file you can see your pragma marks and the separated lines too. Number four, another way to break up your code file is by using extensions. In the Swift documentation, it says that extensions add new functionality to an existing class, among other things. Using an extension, you can add quite a bit, including properties, methods, conforming to protocols. So if it logically makes sense, you can create an extension for your class and move part of the code to the extension instead. For example, oftentimes when I'm working with table views, I like to move the code which conforms to the UI table view data source and the UI table view delegate, I move that code into an extension for the view controller just to separate it out with the other code. On the other hand, you can also use pragma marks, which you just learned about. Number three, default values for parameters. If you have a method where you want to provide an option for a parameter, you can use a default value for that parameter. For example, in this method that makes ribs, Mmm. You can pass in the sauce you want, but if you don't pass it in, then it's barbecue by default. Which is fine by me. Number two, computed properties. Do you sometimes have methods like this for simple conversions or calculations? Well, instead of a method, you might be able to get away with using a computed property where the value of that property is calculated on the fly. So instead of that method converting liters to milliliters, you might have a computed property that looks like this. All right, number one, the final tip and also the bonus tip. You can easily improve compile time and app performance by using the access modifiers final and private for your classes and properties where it makes sense. If a class you're creating doesn't need to be subclassed, then mark it as final. If you're not sure, you can mark it as final anyways and just take off the keyword if it turns out you need to subclass it. For properties, if they are only going to be accessed within the code you write inside that class, then mark it as private. All right, so that was nine tips in total that you can use today to improve your Swift coding. Now I wanna turn it over to you. Which tip are you going to use in your next Swift coding session? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. And if there are some other tips that you think would be helpful to beginners, let me know in the comments below as well. Lastly, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.